So what do the professionals think are the best monitors for your Mac? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. We have a fun one today. Now I review monitors on my channel from time to time. I do BenQ and a whole bunch of other ones, but I'm just one person. I can give you my opinion, what I think. So I thought this would make a good video for people looking for monitors for a Mac. It can be a MacBook or it can be a Mac Mini, a Mac Studio, it doesn't matter. But if you're looking for a monitor for your Mac, I figured I'm gonna go out and see what the professionals think, right? So I went out and I looked at a whole bunch of different sites and I'm gonna show you what sites I kind of looked at. And then I took all the monitors that they recommend and I put them into a huge file of about 35 different monitors. So in this video, I'm gonna show you who kind of the sources are and then I'm gonna show you all the monitors that they all kind of pick together. You know, what are these, you know, it's a big list basically. So if you're looking for a monitor and the one you want is on this list, you're probably going in the right direction. But I think this is a good video. It's gonna be a long one. I'm gonna go through really, really quickly just to showcase them very, very quickly, not all the features, but I'll have the list in the description so you can go back into the description of the video, click on any of them and go back and do your own research. But I just wanna show you what the experts think are some of the best monitors for your Mac. I figure this is gonna help some people looking, but it's a big list. Let's get into it. All right, and just really quickly, who are the experts, right? So if you look over here, this is called Artings. They do a whole bunch of different panel reviews and stuff like that. It's a professional reviewer. So I use them. I use them for part of it, and that's just a small part of it. But then I went on to do a whole bunch of other ones. I actually use Tom's Guide. You guys know Tom's Guide. I use Macworld. I use US News. I use TechRadar, BuyersGuide.org, CreativeBlog.com, IGN, you know IGN. And then I also did 9to5Mac, Yahoo News. I went through a whole bunch of these things. That's why I have 35 different monitors. So I threw them all together. I did, you know, they all picked similar ones, and then if they overlapped, I just threw one obviously in there. And now we have this big giant list of monitors these people are recommending in 2024. So without further ado, let's get into the list. Sit back and relax. It's going to be a long one, and it's going to be quick, but let's get into it. The first one just to get off the list is going to be obviously the studio display right here. I'll have links to all this again in my description. $14.99 on Amazon right now. All these reviewers say that if you're looking for a monitor that's going to, you know, it's not the best one out there, you know, for the features and the cost. It's pretty expensive. But if you just want one that's going to work no matter what and you're not going to have any issues with it, just pick this up. I'm just going to touch on this one. Obviously, we all know the studio display is a great display. 5K, you know, this is probably the one that they all agree on. And then the other two 5K that you want to consider here, and we all know about these, and then we'll get into the more specific ones. Here's the LG. This is going to be the LG 5K, obviously, ultra-fine screen. Right now it's on sale for $11.46, 12% off. So still, you got to weigh between this and the studio display. I'd probably go with the studio display. Obviously, it depends if you want glossy or matte. And then finally, the third 5K that you can consider here is going to be the Samsung 27-inch Viewfinity S9. Here it is on sale, actually. If you can find a sale like this, $8.99, 44% off right now on Amazon. If you can find sales like this, it makes it a lot more attractive than the studio display. A lot of times this thing actually costs like $1,300, $1,400, $1, then never buy this thing. But for $8.99, this is actually a great deal. And a lot of the people are moving that up the list when they see the cost go down. So it kind of goes like this. The cost, as it goes down, this thing becomes more and more, you know, sought after. Let's just put it that way. So look for that sale. This is actually a good 5K monitor. Well, let's go through some of these other monitors now that are more off the beaten trail that you may not be even know about. And these are the ones that they recommend. So the number, they're not in any particular order either. I'm just going to group them by the companies. So here's the first one. BenQ PD3220U Thunderbolt 3 monitor. 32-inch monitor. Color is super accurate for your Mac. It's an awesome monitor. I'll put up a picture here. I did a review on this thing, a whole review. So check out that review if you want to see more about this. This is probably the number one. It's only 4K. It's almost a thousand bucks. So it's pretty expensive. This is the kind of the one that they all agree on, though, is one of the best ones for the Mac. And the number two is the new one. And I'm going to be doing a review on this one coming up soon, so stay tuned for that video. But this is kind of the replacement of it. Here it is, the BenQ PD3225U 32-inch. Again, this is a little, about 100 bucks more than the last one. This is kind of the updated model of that last one. So depending on sales and stuff, the one I just showed you or this one, they're both great 32-inch monitors, big screens. Another one by BenQ that they all recommend is here, the BenQ PD2706UA. Now, the reason I do this is not only the screen, it's, it's not that expensive. It's, well, it's kind of expensive, 600 bucks, but it's the ergonomics of the stand. You can see it here, it flips all around your desk and it, it's really good. You can kind of move it all around as you need to. So it's one of those things where the ergonomics is one of the key factors on it, but the panel is also very solid and it just works really well with the colors on a Mac. So this is another one they recommend. All right, let's keep going down the list. We got a couple more BenQs that I'm going to go through Dells and everything else and then a whole bunch of different manufacturers. Here's the next one. It's the BenQ PD3205UA. 
Again, this is gonna be the same one I just showed you, but this is in 32 inch. The other one was 27 inch. It's only about 100 bucks more, 669. Really good deal if you want a bigger screen on that one that's got the ergonomic stand. Pretty good, and they all recommend this. We got a few more BenQs, and then we'll keep getting into the Dells. This is the BenQ PD 2725U. It's a 27 inch 4K monitor here, 669. Again, this is actually renewed, so it's a little bit harder to get. So it, this is going to be more expensive panel, but these are great panels. I mean, if you want a 27 versus a 32 and uh, you're looking for a high quality color, you don't want to spend 1500 bucks. This is a good one to look at. And then BenQ, if you want a widescreen, everyone kind of, well, not all of these. I'm saying some of them recommended, some of them, you know, obviously didn't mention them, but here's another one by BenQ, the PD3420Q Ultrawide, 34 inch WQHD, so it's only 1440p, and it's, you know, it's obviously going to be, it's not as high a resolution as the 4K, but if you're looking for kind of a widescreen and you, you can deal with the 1440, which I think is you know, obviously 20 something hundred by whatever, it's 2K, it's not going to be 4K, it's still a great monitor because it's in a native resolution, um, obviously when you downscale a Mac at 5K, you don't lose any of the, fu you know, you, you don't have fuzzy text and stuff, so this is actually a good choice for that. If you really want a widescreen, it comes with the puck as well. So overall, I recommend this myself. I've actually used one of these. They're very good if you can deal with you know, 1440p. All right, let's get into Dells now. These are the ones that the, they all recommend for the Dell. This is probably one of the most you know, common ones right here of all of them. This is the Dell 2722 QC 27 inch. It's a 4K panel, UHD. 3840 by 12 or 2160, only $299 right now on Amazon. It's a 19% off. If you're looking for one of the best low-cost 4K screens, can't go wrong with this Dell right here. Uh, obviously, look at all the ports. I'll have links in here. You guys got to make sure the ports work with you. I'm just kind of rifling through this for the list. The next one they recommend is the Dell UltraSharp. It's the U3223QE. It's a mouthful, but this is a bigger panel, 31.5 inches, 4K though, um, UHD. Again, a great panel, 629. So for a little bit bigger panel, if you want to spend less money than the BenQ I showed you, this is a great option for 629. It's 28% off right now, usually closer to about 850. Let's just keep moving. The Dell UltraSharp 2720Q 27 inch. So this is going to be another 4K screen here, $710. Amazon Choice, a lot of these are all Amazon Choices because it's just a great panel. It's 27 inch. So if you're looking at this, you know, and you're kind of concerned, should I spend this much money on a 27 inch? It's totally worth it. This is a good panel. It's going to be comparable to those 27 inch BenQs that are more expensive as well. Just depends if you like Dell and the ports are right. But this one's a really good pickup as well. All right, let's keep moving. The Dell UltraSharp 2723QE, 27 inch 4K panel. We want to go a little bit cheaper. The panel's maybe not as good here, but it's $459.99. Still a great panel for what you get. Obviously, you get the stand that moves and everything like that, so you get some good features, but overall, it's a pretty basic monitor. But on the bottom of it, a lot of these monitors from Dell have kind of almost like a built-in KVM almost down there. Ton of ports and tons of I.O. There's a 459, that's a really good deal for this monitor. All right, here's our first 1080p monitor, but if you want a really cheap 1080p monitor, you just want to do some basic stuff, here's one by Dell. It's the S2421HS. They all recommend this one. It's 1920 by 1080, 24-inch 1080p LED. 75 hertz, though. You get a little bit higher than 60 hertz on this. Only $137.99 on sale right now. So if you're looking for kind of just a second screen that's low, lower quality than the 4K, this is actually a really good one to pick up if you're looking at those lower ends. And then let's get into some... Now, we get through the Dells. Let's get into Asus now. So here's the Asus ProArt display, 27-inch. It's the PA279CRV. This is very common. Everyone, I think, knows about this one. This is one of the more common ones. A lot of people that have Max pick up. A great panel again, 4K, 99% DCI P3, very color accurate, only 41740. So if it works for you on the ports and everything, that's a really good one to pick up and very common. Then we have another one here that they recommend. A couple of them recommend it, not all of them, but this came up a couple times. It's the Asus Tough Gaming 28. 4K monitor. Now, you're not really going to be gaming on a Mac, but the reason you'd pick this up is it's 144 hertz, 3840 by 2160, again, 4K, and it's a good panel, 622, but you really have to have a reason for this. Maybe you do some gaming on a PC and you want to switch between the Mac and the PC, then this is a good option for you. We're going to keep moving. Here's the Asus ProArt Display, PA278QV, and uh, this is only a 2560 by 1440, so it's a 1440 monitor, but only 239. Again, with the resolution and not having blurry text, I'm not going to get into all that. Some people it bugs, some people it doesn't. But this is kind of a good middle ground, 239 if you want 1440. Another great monitor by Asus. This next one's very, very similar, and they still rec recommend this on a lot of these channels. 
This is going to be the, let me just see here, the Asus ProArt, just like the last one. It's the PA278CV, so it's a little bit different. You can find them. There's not much difference between this one and the last one. It's 249 bucks. This one's still, 50, uh, what is it, 2560 by 1440, so it's only a 1440p panel for about 250 all right, and then we're down to the kind of budget stuff, and then we're going to get, uh, well, just with Asus. Then we're going to go through a whole bunch of other manufacturers. This is the Asus 23.8-inch 1080p. This is, again, their kind of 1080p that they recommend if you want a really cheap, inexpensive monitor for a Mac. $143.99, not bad there. So that's a pretty inexpensive one. Let's keep moving. So here, this kind of surprised me. A lot of these, the two different companies, or two to three of them, I think, all recommended this. Now, this is an unusual brand, obviously, and I looked into it, and they have super good reviews. This is the Philips Creator Series 27E2F7901, mouthful, 27 inches, 4K UHD IPS black panel, 399. So if you look here, it's an Amazon choice, over four, what is it, four to 5,000 people uh, reviewing this. So it's something that you never hear. Of. Philips, is that any good? This, trust me, this panel has been on a lot of those review sites. They, a lot of them agree this is one of the better panels out there. And it's only 399 bucks right now. I know it's Philips and it's a different name, but still, get over that. It's a good panel. And believe it or not, they make some really crazy panels. Here's one by Philips. It's called the Philips 27B1U7903. It's only 27-inch panel. It's, um, but the, the kicker here is it's LED monitor, so it's mini LED monitor, just like the Mac is going to make in the future, like the studio is not. It's mini LEDs, and so this one is brilliant. It's basically, I believe, it's super bright. It's 3840 by 2160, but I looked it up, and it's 1139 bucks, and I was like, what's going on here? So I went into, uh, you know, just looking at all these different reviews, and it's all got 9 out of 10, 4.5 out of 5. I mean, it's, it's been highly reviewed as an awesome monitor, but you're going to pay really high for it for a 4K 27-inch. All right, so the next one's going to be an Acer, not an Asus. This is going to be one that they all, you know, a couple of them actually recommended. It's going to be the Asus Predator XB283K. And then it's got this crazy thing after, I don't know, K-V-B-M-I-I-P-R-U-Z-X. I mean, it's crazy, right? But it's a 28-inch 4K, and it's 449. But again, if you're looking, if you're kind of a fan of Acer and stuff like that, they say the Predator is pretty good. Again, this is 144 hertz here for 449. So if you're going to be mixing it between gaming and the Mac, this is a good option here um, with that kind of high refresh rate. Um, actually, I'm going to keep going here. Let me keep moving down. So the next one is going to be the Acer Predator. And it's a different model. It's going to be the 31.5 inch. So it's kind of similar, but a little bit larger screen here. Again, 4K gaming monitor, 144 hertz, 679. So if you want a bigger panel here and you like to do the gaming, they recommend this one for interchange between the Mac and the PC. So it's a good monitor there. Let's keep going here. And then here's another cheap entry into the 1080p. So I gave you, this is going to be the third option. I think maybe the only option left. But this is going to be the Acer EZ321Q. Um, big, it's 31.5 inch 1080p though monitor. So it's a big monitor, but you're going to get a lower resolution, obviously at that size as well. But it's only $159.99. So maybe you're older, you have bad eyes or something, you just want something big or something in the background that you're going to be at a distance from. This will be perfect if you're sitting a little bit further away for like a second screen, maybe for stocks or something. This would be good, $159. All right, let's keep going. So now we're into LG. So LG Ultrafine, this is going to be the UHD 27-inch. And let me just see here. It's the 27UN850-W IPS panel, 350. This one is highly sought after. Again, it's one of those more common ones for the 4K. A lot of people do use this. And uh, it's something that, you know, you're not going to go wrong with if you have a Mac. Um, it's kind of the staple of LG. Then we have an LG Ultrawide. This is 1349. This is going to be a 5K Nano. It's 5K this way, but not this way. So you got to you know look at the resolution. It's kind of a crazy resolution. 5120 by 2160, 1349. So if you want a really big widescreen on a Mac, this is the one that they all recommend. 34WK95U-W, 34 inch ultra wide. Let's keep going. If you want it even bigger than this, this is going to be a curved display. This is the LG 40WP95C-W, 40 inch ultra wide curved display. 1400 bucks, but you can see the DCI-P3, 98%, very color accurate monitor, huge monitor, but you have to like the curve on it. 1400 bucks too is getting really close to the studio display, but it's going to give you a lot more room. And uh, again, this resolution is 5120 by 2160, so it's kind of a pseudo 5K, not really, but it gives you a lot of space and a lot of stuff for editing and stuff. All right, so now we got some kind of cleanup brands at the end of the video. Here's one by Gigabyte. It's the M27Q 27-inch. This is only a 1440, but it's got 165 hertz on it. 
lot of people recommend this and a lot of the channels did just for kind of a secondary monitor at 269.99 there. Let's keep moving here. The Samsung 32 inch, this is the M80C or the M8 they call it. And we've talked about this many times. This is a 32 inch 4K panel. It's got a lot of TV features built into it. It's really inexpensive right now. It's $399 only, 43% off. I think for that price, it's a no-brainer. It doesn't always get like the highest reviews, but it's it's we know it works on the Mac. We know it works fairly good. So if you want a big display that looks actually fairly cool, they don't have a lot of pictures in here, but it looks like a Mac screen in there. Um, 32 inches, you can't go wrong with this one for $399. All right, let's keep moving here. One that a couple of the sites recommended, and I'm not so sure a couple of these rogue brands, but is the A-Logic Clarity. This is the 27F3 4K CPD 27-inch 4K. Um, you know, this is a brand that it looks a lot like a Mac. You can't really see here, but it has the background that looks kind of like a Mac. It looks like it's built for MacBooks. It's the silver color, matches really well. But I guess it's a pretty good panel. You can see here, there's only 25 ratings, but it's a 4.7 out of 5. Um, really good, 629 though. So you gotta get in that cusp. Do your own research on that one. It's one of those off brands. The next one's gonna be the Omen, 27, uh, Omen 27U. It's a 4K gaming monitor. Again, if you wanna interchange between the two, this is gonna be 3840 by 2160. 604 though. But they say this is actually, uh, you know, probably one of the better screens. I believe this is HP Omen, so it's an HP screen. You can see here, it's obviously got some good reviews on it, 4.5. It's a little bit older model, but it's, that's why the price is a little bit lower. But still overall, pretty good panel if you're gonna be interchanging between a Mac and gaming. All right, let's keep going. The next one is a little bit cheaper. This is the HP Omen 27K. So it's very similar to the one I just showed you, 3840 by 2160, but it's 39, uh, what is it? 439.54 only. So it's about, what is it, 200 bucks cheaper. I believe it's actually a newer model, 2023. Panel may not be as good as the other one I just showed you, but still, it's got 95% DCI-P3. It's got 144 hertz if you like that. Overall, it's a good panel if you're looking at it. And then we have another one that they recommended on a couple of these sites. It's the HP Z27K G3. It's a mouthful, 27 inch panel, 30380 right here, but this one's renewed. I couldn't find it new right now, so it might be an older panel. Um, it saves about, what is it, 44%. So it was, it was usually about five or 600 bucks. So it's a pretty good panel there. Let's keep moving here. The HP E27 UG4 295. This is gonna be a 1440 60 hertz display, but I guess it's got a good panel if, you know, obviously if you're just wondering, if you see come across this on sale or something and you need 1440p, you're gonna be okay with this one, 295 right now. And uh, it's just, you know, pretty easy name here. Let's keep moving down the list here, B&H. Now this one's temporary out of stock. There's mixed reviews on these, you know, Doe actually created these a lot of monitors maybe a year ago, and there's a lot of really bad reviews. This Gorilla Glass one has a little bit better reviews on it. Um, you can see here four out of five here, but it's the Doe Spectrum 1 27 inch 4K, 144 Hertz. The reason you pick something like this up, it's 599, but out of stock right now, is it does have Gorilla Glass, so it's got that glossy screen, it looks like almost like a Mac, Mac screen or a studio display where it's a, a, you know, glossy, which a lot of people like. And it does, and a, lot, a lot of people, when you see the reviews, they say it's very crisp, very clear. So overall, I mean, it just comes down to the quality and long-term use of it. But I guess the screen panel and everything like that is fairly good here. And we're gonna keep moving here, just two left. We got the ViewSonic VP2756 2K. 27 inch, this is only 1440p for 299. But if you're looking and you like ViewSonic and you need 1440p, this is one that they recommend as well. And then finally, to wrap everything up, is the ViewSonic VP2768A-4K, 27-inch premium IPS panel, 4K monitor with advanced ergonomics. We can, you know, you guys can do all of that research yourself. Long story short, it's for $16.99. So this is kind of the meat and potatoes of ViewSonic. If you want a 4K quality panel, this is the one that they all recommend from that. When I say all of them, I mean a couple of them. I mean, I'm, I'm collaborating, I think, 10 or 15 different professional sites. And I was just looking for matches. So there you have it. It's not coming from me. I'm only one person. I'm just telling you what they're saying. So I kind of collaborated everything together. And if there's only one of, you know, if they only mentioned one of them on one site, I would pull it out. And then I got this list. Is it the best list? I don't know. You tell me. I'm sure there's tons of other ones out there. But these are the ones that the sites are listing in 2024. I'm not sure if they're doing all the research or not, or maybe they're just looking at old lists. But this is what they came up with. And I wanted to kind of let people know this is what I found. All this will be in the description of the video. And we will talk to you soon in the next one. I hope this helps people. We'll make it a little bit more exciting next time. I promise you, we'll talk to you soon. Peace.